everybody, this is Anthony with you, the Italian Bible-believing Jew, and welcome back to the next video of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 in this series. This will be the fun chapter because far too many people are just either ignorant of this chapter and don't go into it, or are willfully ignorant and stupid, and ignore it because they don't want to cause a split in the assembly or church crowd. We will go through verses 1 through 2, 9 through 17, 25 through 28, and 38 through 40. The reason why I'm leaving verses out is because they don't pertain specifically to this topic of marriage, divorce, and remarriage. And it will take a long time to go through the entire chapter of 40 verses. <laughs> so it's very important that we stick to the verses in context of the series. Verses 1 through 2 and 9. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless... To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. But if it cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. This is speaking of two unmarried people who have lust one toward another. So to avoid fornication, sex before marriage to that person, they should marry. So it is a safe haven away from that sin. Paul recommends to marry than to burn for lust one toward another. Clear? Verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Paul's given commandment from God, so read carefully. Verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. The commandment is for the woman not to leave her husband. Desertion. It's deserting him. But if she does, she must remain single or return to her husband. And the husband cannot divorce her for leaving. Did you get that? If you don't get that in 10 seconds, you're blind as a bat. And you've been indoctrinated by what you were taught and crippled by your education. Verses 12-14 through 14. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband, that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So here is an instance where Paul is giving his discretion, but he's giving his discretion in Matthew five forty three through 44 Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Again, to focus on this last part of this passage because the Apostle Paul gave his discretion on something that Christ already taught. So, in fact, it may have been his opinion or discretion, but it was doctrine stated from the Son of God himself. An unbelieving spouse is a heathen, Gentile, your enemy, and Christ said to love your enemies. So how can you love your enemy if you put your spouse away and divorce them? Right? The key words are if. It is conditional. If a brother or sister have a heathen spouse and they be pleased to dwell with them, they cannot put them away. They are not to. Show grace. Why? Because they are sanctified by their believing spouse. That doesn't mean they're saved. It means they're in a safe haven. They're in a safe household. That hopefully the Holy Spirit will sow the seed of the Word of God and they will be converted. If there's a split home in verse 14, the children are considered unclean. But they are now holy. Why? Because the marriage stayed together. That is why Christ said in Matthew 19, 6, Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. But, the word but is a contrasting word. It's giving an alternative of the scenario, a possibility. But if, conditional word, but if the unbelieving depart, who's the unbelieving? Their heathen spouse. If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. 
a brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. Paul is instructing the believing spouse to let the heathen go if they choose to. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case. Wait, what? What's the bondage? Again, going back to Romans 7, 2. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So, again... Can someone be alive physically, but dead spiritually? Yes. The unbelieving spouse that left and refuses to return is dead to you. Again, see these same scriptures given below. Read them carefully. Now, if remarriage is only permitted under physical death, then Paul is literally contradicting himself in what he wrote in Romans 7 which that would make him an imbecile freak. Verses 16 through 17. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Paul is making the point that you cannot save your wife. From what? Deserting you and becoming a believer. You cannot force either one on them. Paul said to let them go. Verses 25 and 26. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment, as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord, to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Paul is again giving his personal judgment. But as proved before, he's once again giving the instructions of Jesus Christ, even though he may not have known it. Now, I believe the Gospels were already written at this time. Otherwise, how would he have been able to make the connection with what Jesus said? That's logically clear. 27 and 28. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. Therefore, be content with your present state. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. In verses 10 through 15, Paul is talking about desertion, not fornication or death. Why? Because those words are nowhere found in them. And he gives no evidence that he's talking about fornication or death. Romans 7 2, the last part. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Did you see that key word? Loosed, which is not always talking about physical death. But as proved before, there can be a spiritual death as in dead to you in relation and fellowship. Let's read the verse again. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. Now, if this is talking about only physical death, then literally what Paul is saying is this. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to kill her, or seek not her death. Art thou loose from a wife in death? Seek not a wife. Are you kidding me? Does he really have to tell them not to think about killing their wives? Do you think Paul is stupid, or an over-paranoid imbecile about murder going on in the church at Corinth? Use your head, okay? Verse 28. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Remarriage can occur after the spouse leaves, deserts him, and refuses to return, and receives the divorce bill. It's very clear that if a man is loosed from a wife in desertion, he's allowed to remarry. Why? Because he wrote it, and what he wrote is scripture. Now, according to apostate Christians, opinion theology, if she leaves, he has to remain single too. How is that fair? She was the heathen, she took off, and he could not stop her or control that. So, according to modern fake Christian theology, 
He's done for and has to remain single, unhappy and devastated the rest of his life until she dies. Let's read verse 15 again. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. How can I be called to peace if I'm stuck and can't move on? Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Question. How can you have trouble in the flesh if you remarry after your spouse physically dies? That doesn't make sense. Do you know that the flesh is your sinful nature? So it shows fruit of the flesh, which is sin. See Galatians 5, 19-21. The reason why you're going to have trouble in the flesh if she leaves you or you divorce her for fornication reasons is because the fruit of the flesh can rise up. Bitterness, hate, unrighteous anger, resentment toward that person. That can be tough to deal with. Verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I had the Spirit of God. Once again, here he is talking about both spiritual and physical death. People ask, why didn't Paul teach anywhere on the exception of fornication? Because he doesn't have to explain what Christ already discussed. Aren't Christ's words good enough on the subject? That's obvious. Paul also didn't touch on bestiality. Does that make the Torah commandments regarding to avoid that sin void to us? No, it doesn't. Come on now, use your head. Use logical sense. In verse 39 through 40, he's referring back to Romans 7, another instance of biblical numerology. If it's only talking about physical death that she or he is allowed to remarry, then he's contradicting himself when he said in verse 28, But if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. It does not make sense for verse 27, Art thou bound unto a wife, seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife, seek not a wife. To only be referring to physical death. That doesn't make logical sense. Again, is he paranoid about spouses killing each other in the church at Corinth? Come on now. Conclusion. So there you have it. This is the whole biblical doctrine of marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Now, if you're reading all of this, and you're rolling your eyes, sighing, and denying the factual statements of Scripture presented and explained in right context, then one of two problems is occurring in your life. One, you refuse to accept Scripture as it is written, so you'd rather go to man's interpretation of Scripture, you'd rather go to geek Greek, the text, or Hebrew, the Scripture on top of the stove, a man's private interpretations. Or two, you're not ready to receive this truth, and yet, once again, that's okay, because God progressively reveals truth to everybody, one step at a time. Now some people want to claim, well, that Anthony just thinks he's right and everybody else is wrong, and anybody who disagrees with him, he thinks is a heretic and false teacher. But that's a common, typical, and childish reaction from a spoiled little brat who doesn't have any sense from the Holy Spirit of what truth actually is in exact words from the King James Authorized Perfected Version. This is a difficult topic, so watch these videos slowly and study the scripture slowly. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. Don't let me be your teacher. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. All of you take care. Love the Lord Jesus Christ. Fear God and keep His commandments. And read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks.